God. Let's give God praise for increase. Amen. Amen. Praise God. When world changes, when world changes international increase, we all increase. Amen. One church, many locations. What a blessing it is to be a branch. Of such anointing, such passion, such love for people. To be able to make a mark in this world that will never be erased. And we're connected. Amen? Amen. Praise God. It's time for communion. If you have need of communion elements, if you would, raise your hands. Uh, our ushers will get you in a communion element. Praise God. Praise God. Take your bread. The bread represents the body of Christ. Which was broken for you and for me. Yes, we do this every week, but we don't take it lightly every week. We do this to remind ourselves of what Jesus paid for us to have. He said, do this in remembrance of me. You may eat. Take your cup. It represents the blood of Christ. Not just any blood could have dealt with our sin. Only the blood of Christ. He said, do this also in remembrance of me. You may drink. Hallelujah. Somebody say, it is well. It is well. Praise God. Father God, we thank you for this time, this opportunity to minister to your people. Lord, I thank you for revelation that will flow today. Holy Spirit, I trust you. I thank you. You know what the people need. They may you minister to them as I minister your word. I send you forth. To reveal unto them more of who, who the Father is. And we thank you for it. I thank you for no interruptions. No hindrance of the word of God today. And I thank you Lord that we have victory in every area. And we declare it to be so in Jesus name. And all that agree. Say it. Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I see some of y'all weren't ready for that. Won't he do it? That's all right. You're going you gonna, to you gonna dance in the car though. That's all right. <laughs> Praise God. Won't he do it? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes, he will. Yes, he has. <laughs> He's already done it. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, I know that was your song. That's all right. Praise God. I'm excited to get back in the Word today. Uh, one, over the past three weeks, we've been talking about living in the newness of life. Uh, I mean, you know, it's, you can't live in the newness of life until you realize that your old life has gone. And that's what happened when you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He took your old man. He took who you used to be and gave you his life. He, he took his, who you used to be and gave you his life. And... Uh, and you can't move forth in who you are created to be now in your new nature in Christ Jesus until you truly come to a place of where you believe that that man, that old man, has died. Yes. Amen. That old man died through faith. And that, that's important to say that it's through faith because it can't be by your works. Yeah. Right. You can't work hard enough to get rid of the old man. That's why it takes faith. That's why it's take, I trust God. I believe what Jesus has done on the cross. And through that faith, Christ supernaturally gives you a new nature. So we've been talking about living in the newness of life. We began this journey on what hinders most people from living in their new man, their new nature that's created after the image of God. And oftentimes that sin conscious is, is what hinders people from Believing what Jesus has done. 
when I say sin conscious, I mean that they're constant, they're still aware and consciously aware of the old man with the old behavior. Never fully believing that that man completely died. Completely died. Someone may say, well, if he completely died, why is it I still have the urge or I still do some of the things that I, that I used to do? Well, you have to renew your mind in the word of God on your new nature until you believe it. And as you renew your mind, what, I'm saying, what am I saying by renew your mind? Meaning that you have to exchange the word of God, your thoughts for what the word says. Amen. You can't go off of how you feel. Your feelings are subject to change every day. Yes. Amen. 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 And so if you live based on your feelings, you're going to be a different person every day. <laughs> People are like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you're going to be a different person every day. That's why you can't trust your feelings. God didn't give us emotions to govern our life. He, didn't, he, he, he gave us an emotion, emotions to be aware of of certain things in life. So if you touch a, a iron, your emotion is going to tell you it's hot. <laughs> Go and get your hand off of there. It's hot. So you, but you can't, he didn't give them to govern our life. When I say govern, I mean he didn't give the, our emotions for us to be led by them. You may not always feel like you're a new man in Christ. Guarantee, I'm pretty sure a lot of days you won't feel like you're a new man in Christ, but it's, it's not based on how you feel. It's based in what the word says. How do you become the righteousness of God? Well, it's the, the word says you're righteous. Not because you feel righteous. I don't even know what righteous feels like, but you can't feel righteousness. <laughs> you just are the, you are the righteousness of God by faith. And the word says you are. So you can't, when I'm talking about living in the newness of life, living in your new man, you can't search for this in your emotions and how you feel. Because it's, it's not, your life is not governed by your emotions. Um, Jesus, we talked about how the purpose of Jesus finishing the work of the cross. And just once and for all dealing with man's sin. Past, present, and future sin. That was the purpose for him finishing the work on the cross. Um, and also creating a way for that old man to die. We talked about how him finishing the work on the cross created the way for our old nature to die because that is the only way that that could have happened. Because once again, it's not about what we can do that that old man died and we can receive the newness or the new nature in Christ. So him finishing the work on the cross was a way for our old man to effectively die off and us walk in the newness of life walking after the spirit. Uh, then last week we talked about, we focused on how him finishing, Jesus finishing the work on the cross ushered in the spirit of truth or the Holy Spirit. Because he finished the work on the cross, he, he ushered in the spirit of truth that he said would abide with us forever. Amen. So from there we looked at what is the purpose Everything God does is for a purpose. Amen? Amen? Everything he does, everything he's positioned us in life, every favor, every earthly blessing, everything that he's given to us, God has a purpose for everything. Amen. What happens is that we don't understand the purpose of a thing or what he's done. Then a couple of things will happen. We'll either abuse it or we'll neglect it. So oftentimes we haven't understood the true purpose of the Holy Spirit. So what happens? We neglected the Holy Spirit, which is the very essence of our Christian life. That's what makes us Christians, is the Spirit of God living in us. It's not by our church attendance. It's not because we've done things in the community. It's not even because we walked around telling people. Um, I mean, the, 
it's not because we walked around telling people that we're saved. It's because the actual spirit of God lives in us is what makes us Christian. You understand? It's not, it's not what we've done or what we can do that makes us Christian. It's the very spirit of God living on the inside of us. And uh, this week on Wednesday, midweek service, uh, Pastor Michael Smith was teaching, and he, he shared a, a very thought-provoking point. Uh, he said, how did we get to the point to where we're remind, having to remind believers about the Holy Spirit? Pastor was talking about that. He said, how did we get to a point to where we had to remind believers about the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit is the very essence of our Christian life? I'll tell you how we got to that point. No understanding. No understanding on why God sent the Holy Spirit into our lives to abide with us forever. So we didn't understand it, so we just neglected it. And said, well, that sounds great. It sounds like good news, but just give me something that I can touch, something that I can do. But he gave us the Holy Spirit, and I shared with you this last week, the mission for the Holy Spirit in the life of every believer is to perfect the love of God. The mission of the Holy Spirit in the life of every believer is to perfect the love of God. And so that's where I'm going to pick up with. I'm going to, show, I'm going to go through the scriptures and show you that even where activating your spiritual gifts are concerned, even where activating the spiritual gifts in the church is concerned. Love being the greatest gift. Which provides the activation of your spiritual gift. Even where tongues is concerned. Prophecy is concerned. It, it's all tied into the love of God. And the reason why I'm having to teach this more and more because I understand that when we first hear it, there's already a barrier from what we've understood in the past, what the world has taught us about love and how it's the emotional kind of thing. So it's, it's, it's a lot of that still tied in. So it's not really sinking in what the true love of God is all about. And why is that? Why was that a central miss, uh, uh, mission for the Holy Spirit? Why is perfecting the love of God so important? I mean, you know, God is love. Amen. Amen. So, if God, God is love, we know that based on what the Word tells us. And our man has been created in His image. We've been created. I mean, you know that if we're not understanding the love, we're not even understanding on who we are. How can we walk in the newness of life if we don't understand how we've been created? So today we're going to, we're going to dive into some more of that uh, and really truly grasp an understanding on the love of God. Amen? Let's go uh, to Matthew chapter 24. Somebody say, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is, my is my helper. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. Then this is why it's so important that as I'm listening to the Holy Spirit on what we need as a body, so we can stay in line and, and continue to move forth in the things of God and not be sidetracked. Matthew chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. It says, and I'm reading out of the New King James Version. It says, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Verse 13, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Now, we've looked at that in the past and may have thought, well, he's, talking, he's not talking about, he's talking about the world. No, he's talking about believers. 
He's talking about believers. How can your love grow cold if you don't have love? If, you, if, you, if your love, you have to have love and walk in love in order for it to grow cold. Because of lawlessness or, or outside influences or sin or lawless activity, it says the love of many will grow cold. Will grow cold. Uh, let's go over to Matthew chapter 22, verse 36. And we all know that Jesus, when he finished the work on the cross, not only did he pay for our sins, but he also fulfilled the law of Moses. And he, could, he fulfilled all the commandments that was tied into the law of Moses. Uh, we talked about last week that, yes, he fulfilled all of that so that we could fulfill one and operate in one commandment. He fulfilled all of it, and he said if we do this one thing, then that will fulfill all of the commandments. He'd finished the work, but he said, if you do this one thing, this will fulfill every, all of the laws and all of the commandments that was tied into the, Mo, the Mosaic law. He, so he did the work. He, yes, he did fulfill it, but he said that there is still a commandment. There's still a commandment for us believers to walk in. Matthew chapter 22, uh, verse 36. It says, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Verse 37, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Verse 38, this is the first and great commandment. Verse 39, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 40, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, I understand that well, you have to look at the question. Now, I'm not telling you that, yes, you, you need to go out and work and love the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. No. The question was, what is the greatest commandment in the law? You have to look, look at the question. So I'm not saying that you need to go and, and, and carry that out. They asked him the question of what was the greatest commandment in the law. And he gave, them the, he gave them the answer to their question. But it's still love is the, the fulfillment of them all. So he was still going somewhere, but he answered that question at the same time. Love is the fulfillment of all of the laws and the prophets. It is love. It is love. That's, that's the fulfillment of them all. Um, so he was establishing really a commandment that none of them would keep in any way. And that's the ability to love the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. He was establishing something that they could not do within themselves. He was established, he already knew that you, couldn't, you can't do this by yourself. Remember, Jesus was leading them to himself. Whenever he was, whenever he was teaching, whenever he was uh, addressing something that they were saying, Jesus' whole purpose was to lead them to himself. For them to realize that you can't do this on your own. You can't fulfill, you thought you were keeping the commandments, but you can't do this by yourself. You can't do this on your own. That's why you need a savior. That's why Jesus responded with that response. Yes, he was establishing the, the key of love being the key focus, but he was also establishing something that you can't do within yourself. He was also establishing something that you can't do within yourself. Thus the need for help. Amen? Amen. Let's go over to uh, John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verse 12. John chapter 15, verse 12. It says, this is my commandment, that you love one another. 
He said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Verse 13. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. When we're talking about Jesus talking about loving one another as he loved them. This was the, this was the great commandment that Jesus is saying now superseded the commandment of love in the law where it was all works based. So he, he established that yes, this is the greatest commandment in the law, but this, is law, this commandment here supersedes that commandment in the law of love. Where now you can love now because he's going to shed his blood for them. Now we would have the ability to love as he loved. But you have to, you have to look at what that scripture says. Because as Jesus is teaching about loving one another as he loved, he had not yet went to the cross. He had not yet went to the cross. So you have to look at, well, how did Jesus define love? Because it wasn't, we can't just say, well, because he went to the cross. Because that, right, that creates a, something that we can't do, obviously. So you can't say, well, he loved us because he went to the cross. Yes, he, in the end, he went to the cross. But when he made this reference to the commandment, he had not yet went to the cross. He had not yet went to the cross. So Jesus is giving us something that we can't, we can't do now. Because why? The Spirit of God, which is our helper, is now on the inside of us. Now we can love the way Christ loved. Amen? Amen. It's not based in what we can do, but it's based in we having the love of God in us. That we can love others the way Christ loved us. So let's, let's continue on. I want to, um, when we're talking about loving of, uh, one another as Christ loved us and understanding that our helper, the Holy Spirit, and understanding the purpose of the Holy Spirit. We understand that this is the year of the Holy Spirit. So how I many you know that if we don't understand the purpose of the Holy Spirit being sent to us, we'll never walk in the full benefits of why he's with us. It's not just so we can live this fabulous life to ourselves. God's purpose always has other people in mind. Every gift he gives us is always for someone else. Every, everything that we experience good from God, his whole goal is always to build a kingdom. His goal is always the kingdom. His, king, his kingdom is always on his mind. So if he prospers us financially, it's to build the kingdom of God. If he gives us the gift of healing, guess what? That testimony of Christ in you, providing that healing for someone else, it's going to make them a believer. Everything God does is always for the building of the kingdom of God. But if we don't understand the purpose of the Holy Spirit, then we'll just sum, up the whole, sum it up as saying that the Holy Spirit was sent to us that we can have a good life. And never walk in the full experience of why the Holy Spirit was sent to us. Why, do we, why does he abide with us forever? Amen? So we're going to, we want to understand the purpose of the Holy Spirit being in our life. Let's go over to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 15. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Verse 16, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. So Jesus initiates the sending of the Holy Spirit, and he calls him the helper. In the context of this scripture, 
in the context of this scripture of him sending us another helper, what is he helping us with? To keep the commandments, his commandments. Amen. His com what commandment did we just establish as him being the great commandment to love one another as he loved us? So he, in the context of the scripture, he's saying the helper will help you keep the commandment. Somebody said, well, I thought this was a message on, what about the grace of God? That is the grace of God, is that you have a helper now. And it's not based in your works. The law was all, everything was based in your works. The law was, you do good, you get good. You do bad, you get bad. Everything was based in what you can do. And if you didn't do everything to keep it, you were cursed. Grace, the grace of God is, is still, is ineffective in our life. But we can't just assume or say that, well, the grace of God means that I don't do anything now. Jesus has done it all, so I just sit back and just wait to receive it. It's a, you have to use your faith to receive what grace has done. But the grace of God is a life now where you're no longer led by the law, but your life now is led by the Holy Spirit. And you didn't do anything to deserve it. That is what the grace of God is all about. And the grace of God is here to perfect the love of God in your life. He's, he's been sent to perfect the love of God in your life. And to help you keep the commandment of love. He's helping you keep the commandment of love. But there's a purpose even behind that. On why love is the greatest gift. Every, as I said last week, everything in your life works through love. You can't, Paul, Paul talks about it in 1 Corinthians 13. We're going to look at that. You can have it all. You can have the faith that moves mountains. You can have, you can talk to angels. But if, if, the lo if love isn't there, then it's just making noise. And it's, Paul said he's nothing without it. And as believers, we can't be afraid to, to see in the scripture or look in the mirror of the word of God and see where maybe we're not there yet. But I'm here to tell you that there's good news because the Holy Spirit is with you. So wherever you are missing them or wherever you're not at right now, the Holy Spirit has been sent to help you. But if you don't know this, guess what happens? Then you try to find good works to prove your love. Then you'll try to find good works to, to prove that you love God. Doing things, well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this to try to prove that I love God. I love God because I do this. Rather than releasing your faith for the love that he's already given us because he loved us first. He gave us the capacity to, to love others when he poured the love of God in us by the Holy Spirit. But everything in your life is tied into this. Everything. Everything you do. Your faith works through love. So that's why a message that we, we can't just ignore. Because everything works in your life through this love. And, the whole, and you have a helper. Say, I have help. Jesus is... Providing this helper for us. And he said he may, he may abide with you forever. He may abide with you forever. Let's go over to John chapter 13. John chapter 13, uh, we'll begin at 33, verse 33. It says, little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You will seek me, and as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. So now I say to you, verse 34, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. 
verse 35. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Jesus, when he's talking about this love, he's talking about the body of Christ. He's talking about the body of Christ. Look who he was, when, you, when I say that, look who he was refer, referencing this to. He, look who he was talking to. He didn't say go out and love others. He said love one another. By this love, others, all men, will know that you belong to me. He's talking about loving one another in the body. And by this love, others on the outside will notice that we belong to him. Very key point. Very key point because sometimes you might hear people kind of twist that a little bit. Well, God said love others. In context, he said love one another. And by this love, others on the outside will identify and know that you belong to me. Amen? He says do this, not only love one another, but he said in, in specifically, as I have loved you. So he's giving them something that they can't. It's not that they can't reach that love. He's saying, love just like I loved you. He, didn't, he's not, he wasn't telling them to go die on the cross because re remember, he hadn't went to the cross yet. He said, as I have in past tense loved you. I'm going, and I'm going somewhere with, with all of this. As he's saying that as I have loved you. So he's not telling them you need to go to the cross. You need to go find the cross and just get in and die to it. No, he, wasn't, he hadn't went to the cross, but he said, as I have, past tense, loved you. Love one another. Love one another. How did Christ love them? He said, as I have loved you, how did Christ love them? He discipled them. He taught them the truth of the kingdom. He shared, he revealed the Father to them. He's laying out how the church should operate. Discipleship. Discipling others. Lead, discipling them out of the darkness into the marvelous light. Revealing more of who the Father is. Leading them out of darkness into the light. Let's go over to John chapter 17. Jesus tells them exactly how he loved them. John chapter 17, verse 6. This is Jesus praying to the Father. He says, I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Verse 7, now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. Verse 8, for I have given them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. So Jesus is, in his prayer, he's, he's telling us how he demonstrated this love. How he, he, as he said to them, love one another as I already have loved you. He, he shared the word with them. He taught them the word. He discipled them. He led them from, he discipled them from darkness to light. He shared the truth of the kingdom of God. He was demonstrating, practically demonstrating, the love of God for them to follow. He was demonstrating the love of God. This is how, it's not in word, it's not, oh, you, you tell them all, you know, I love them. Jesus didn't, he didn't have bake, he didn't give them food, he didn't give them bake sales, he didn't, you know, he didn't do all the things that we define as love. He said, this is the love, I, truth, I shared with them. I revealed the Father to them. In phases, he revealed the Father, more of the Father to them. This was Jesus demonstrating this love. 
This was Jesus demonstrating his love. And he said, it's for you to do the same. It's for you to do the same. Love is not for, it wasn't just for us. It's not just for us. The Holy Spirit wasn't sent just for us. He was sent so that we can lead others, others out of the darkness into the light. He's with us to, to show us all things and to lead us all truth so that we can lead others out and bring them into the truth of the word of God. But we have to, co one thing we have to do, we have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. We have to cooperate with our help. He is our helper. But if we don't cooperate with him, he's a gentleman. He'll let us do it. <laughs> and we'll quickly find out that that ain't the way. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we have to, on purpose, intentionally cooperate with the Holy Spirit where this is concerned. Because in the word of God, based in the word of God, this is what demonstrating the love of God is, is all about. It's about discipling others. It's about discipling others and leading them out of the darkness, revealing the truth of who Jesus is through the word of God. That's why we changed this whole ministry. I, I was just studying the word and it just went off. And I just, just clearly heard the Lord just, this is, not what I, this is not what I intended for you to do. Not just service as usual. Not just doing a bunch of stuff and calling it service. Intentionally began to develop and disciple the people. So we, we took the whole ministry, everything that we did. We brought all the stewards in, shared this vision that God had put on our hearts about this discipleship ministry. And how he, wanted, he wants us to, to build this ministry based on discipleship. So we, we created, it's four steps in this ministry now on how we're discipling people. First step is knowing Christ. It's knowing Christ. Second is growing in Christ. Third is serving Christ. Fourth is sharing Christ. So we have classes that are lined up, particularly talking about knowing Christ and knowing the body of Christ, who we are as a ministry, and then we have classes set up for spiritual maturity for believers to grow in, in Christ. Because, I mean, you know, it's hard to serve Christ if, you don't, if, you're, if you're not growing and understanding what servanthood is. Amen. So once, you, once they completed that phase, then they go to serving Christ. Then you go to serving Christ. And then sharing Christ is we're, we're believing God for church planning here in Charlotte. Amen? Amen? Planning other groups of believers here in Charlotte. So sharing Christ is all about sending out. This is the essence of the love of God. This is the essence of what he's called us to do. This is why he sent us the Holy Spirit to be. He, Jesus told the disciples that you will be my witnesses. Wait for the Holy Spirit. Wait, why? Because you're going to be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. It was always this. It was never just so we can have good church services. It's always been this. This was God's intent. So we, we rearranged and restructured the entire ministry. And some of, some of you went through class and you realize, oh, it ain't the same. It ain't the same. Because we inten intentionally want to see you grow. We intentionally want to see you spreading the gospel, discipling others. We're, we're raising up disciples so disciples can disciple. That's what the love of God in action looks like. Jesus discipled. He discipled disciples. And then told them in the Great Commission to go and do the same. To go and do the same. He gave them the great commandment and the great commission. To love one another as I loved you. And to go out in all the world and disciple those. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. There's still work for us as believers to do. Amen.
But here's the thing. It's not working for righteousness. It's not working to be in favor or be favored by God. That's the difference. That's the difference from where we used to be. We used to work to try to earn something from God. It's not working to earn. It's lining up with who we are. Amen? Amen. It's lining up with who we've been created to be. That's all it is. It's, it's lining up with who uh, God has made us in our new man to be. Disciples. Amen? Amen? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27. Try to leave the new fashionable glasses on. Amen. Praise God. It says, now you are the body of Christ and members individually. Verse 28, and God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues, verse 29, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles. Verse 30, do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the best gifts. And this is key right here. And yet, I show you a more excellent way. I want you to re remember that. And yet, I show you a more excellent way. So, so the Apostle Paul is laying out all of these gifts. It's in all of these gifts that God has set in the church. When you hear the name Apostle, that's, oh, that's Apostle. Oh, you're an Apostle? Oh, praise God. You're a prophet? Let me hear something. Tell me my life. <laughs> so Apostle Paul is laying out all of these spiritual gifts. But then he goes into, I'm going to show you the most, more excellent way to this. How everything ties in. He said, I'm going to show you this. Go over to uh, chapter 13. He said, I'm going to show you a more excellent way. It says, though I speak in tongues, speak with tongues of men and angels, but, I, but not, have not love, I have become a sounding brass of, or a clanging cymbal. Verse 2, and though I have a gift, the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Verse 3, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Paul said, the Holy Spirit distributes all of these gifts. Desire the greater gift that makes all of these gifts work. Love. Love. The love of God initiates and activates the gifts. Why? Because the, the gifts were not meant for us. The gifts are meant for others, for one another. He said, so desire the greater, the greater gift of love. Some of us, some of you prophesy, some of you apostles, some of you had, we all had different gifts, but the, the common gift that initiates and activates all of them is the love of God. Paul is elevating the love of God even above all the other gifts, because why the love of God, when you understand it, the motivation behind it, why do you want God to use you to heal someone? Why, why, would you, why do you want God to prosper you financially or any other area in your life? Prosperity means success. Why is it? It's the, the motivation behind it is to be love of God. 
It should be the key. That's the driving factor. That's what activates all of the gifts because they're, they're used to be a blessing to other people. So it's not just so we, it's not so we can look good or be famous. Paul saying that if I have all of these things, all of the faith to move mountains, but the love ain't the motivating factor. He said at the end of it, I'm nothing. At the end of it, I'm nothing. But he, 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 constantly, he continues on and giving us examples. And uh, so we can look in the word of God and say, what does love look like? What does love look like? So I'll know where, where, I'm, where I'm positioned. He get, continues in the word at verse 4. He said, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Verse 5, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Verse 7, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Somebody say, I need help. <laughs> Amen. That's what we're saying. You can't do this on your own. That's why you have the Holy Spirit. And I know what you were thinking as I was reading that. You're like, man, do I do all that? I know. That's why you have help. That's why it's called his unmerited favor. He wasn't saying that's for us to not keep it and just overlook it. He's saying those things still need to be done. But guess what? You have the Holy Spirit as your helper to do it. That's what the difference is. It's not about you. It's not you can't do this on your own. Thank you, Jesus. I can't do it on my own. Some of you were thinking evil on your way in here. <laughs> but you delivered, praise God. I believe that. You can't do it on your own. You can't do it on your own. But that's why the Holy Spirit, you know, this is the year of the Holy Spirit. And yes, he's doing miraculous things in the lives of his people. But we have to understand why those miraculous things will take place. What's his motive behind bringing you to a level that you didn't deserve? What's his motive behind putting the power of healing on your hands to lay hands on the sick and they recover? Love heals. Love delivers. He has a motive for everything. We'll see the gifts operate when we can understand that it's the love of God in operation. When I look at our, our servanthood team and I see, you know, probably 1% of the, of the membership servanthood, and I just, I just, for me, I just want us to get an understanding that this is the love of God in activation, in, in practical demonstration of the love of God. This is the practical demonstration of the love of God. It's not a feeling. It's not an emotion. I mean, you know, you've told someone you love them, and then a year later, you, you rethought that love. That was emotion. I'm telling you now, that was emotion. <laughs> or maybe a week later, it's like, nah, that was a mistake. But it was emotion. It was your emotions operating. The love of God doesn't work on emotions. When God poured his supernatural love in you through the Holy Spirit, he gave us all the ability that Christ had to love. And so that's why Christ gave the commandment that now you can love the way I love. Sharing the truth with people. Knowing that you may face the persecution. Discipling other people, leading them out of the darkness and bringing them to the light. Sacrificing your, your time. Your resources. All of that entails giving of yourself. So that someone else can benefit. This is how he anticipated and expected for his church body to operate. You can't have a growth plan without understanding the essence by which we should operate in as believers. Because even if you bring 10,000 people in here and ain't nobody walking in love, they won't be here long. <laughs> right? 
so this is not, once again, I, I said this last week, I don't want you walking out of here with a, oh, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do that. I need you to believe that the Spirit of God has poured his love in you and he's given you a helper, the Holy Spirit, to walk this love out of you. He's giving you the helper to walk this out. You don't have to do this on your own. We can't do it on our own. Amen? Let's uh, continue. It says, uh, verse 8, love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Verse 10, but when that which is perfect has come, that, then that which is in part will be done away. Verse 11, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I, I put away childish things. Verse 12, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. Verse 13, now and now abide faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. The greatest of these, faith and hope. He's not saying get away. He's not saying do away with it. When they're all combined, your faith works. Your faith works through love. Your faith works through love. Amen. How many of you believe that God loves you? Amen. You believe that because his word says that. You believe that because that's what he said, and he poured that into your heart. And so you have peace with that in your heart. We're talking about practically demonstrating the love of God. Let's go over to uh, Matthew chapter 28. I want to go down to verse 18. It says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. In this commission, Jesus was showing them how to practically demonstrate his love. That when you operate in discipleship, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, that's practical. That's how he did with them. He's showing them that's what he did with them. He discipled them. So he wasn't exalting the commission over the commandment. Teach them the commandments. We've always wondered, well, some of us may have wondered, well, what does the love of God look like if it's not an emotion? Love serves. Love desires the best for others, even, though, even if it's positions us to be less than. So I'm not saying go out into the world and, and, and do this. I'm telling you what Jesus said, that when you love one another, the, uh, the world, the others on the outside will notice the love that we have for one another. This was the, this was the model by which Jesus set up. So if we're going to practically walk this thing out, and I know that we are, and we practically, and we really believe the love of God has been poured in us. And the, our helper, the Holy Spirit, has been sent to help us keep the commandment of love. 
So it's now it, the ball falls in our hands on what are we going to do with that? Are we going to walk in according to what the word says? Or will, will, allow, will we allow our own thoughts and our own desires and our own, and our own passion override the word of God? Amen? Did y'all receive anything out of the word today? Yeah. Amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you that your love, your supernatural love, has been poured on the inside of us. Lord, and we on purpose walk in that love. We on purpose disciple others out of the darkness and into the light. We on purpose expect to see the manifestation of that love you poured in us to be on the outside of us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your unmerited favor of pouring everything that Jesus is on the inside of us so that we can be all that he is. And we give you the praise. Well, we cannot do this without you. We choose not to try to do it without you. Our focus is on you. Holy Spirit, may you continually perfect the love of God on the inside of us. Showing us how to stay in the commandment of love. How to love one another the way Christ loved us. And we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. And everybody agrees, said. Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise one more time. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Father, what would you have us to give? What would you have us to give, Lord? We submit to your word. What you have us to give, we will obey. We will do what you instruct of us to do. Without fear. We submit to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And we receive it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you all need an offering envelope, if you would, raise your hands. Amen. We have ushers that's good, going to get you your offering envelopes. Hallelujah. This is the motive by which we give. God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. Out of that love, he gave us his grace. Out of his love, he gave us his son. It's all everything we do in as believers should be birthed out of the love of God in us. Not out of fear. So we give out of that love. We give out, out of honor for him blessing the works of our hands, making us prosperous in everything that we do because his son is prosperous. Hallelujah. If you have text, if you want to text to give, the information is on the screen. Everyone's ready if you would lift your envelopes or phones. Father, we thank you for this seed. We declare it to be blessed and we tell it to go and grow. And we give to you, Father, out of honor and thanksgiving and love and affection towards you for what you've done. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Ushers, you all make pass the buckets. If you're on the end, if you would, please pass the bucket on. We have ushers on the opposite side that will collect them. Amen. We appreciate you so greatly. Hallelujah. Thank you kindly. Praise God. Praise God. While they're passing the buckets, uh, if you're not born again, and you would like to make that decision today, you would like to receive this life that I was teaching on, this love gift of the life of Christ, it's available for you today. But like anything he's done, it's up to you to receive it. He's made it all available for you. It's up to you to receive his love today. You want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If you would like to uh, be baptized by the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues? In our new life, it's living with the Holy Spirit. And you want to understand his language. If you're not speaking in tongues, you're not, you haven't been baptized with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you can receive that gift today. And that's if you have not... Uh, you don't have a church home and you believe God's calling you to be a member of this church we welcome you here allow us to disciple you allow us to lead you out of darkness and into understanding into the light of God's word at this time I'm going to ask the members if you would stand please just check around you make sure everyone is Connected, born again, have the gift, the three things I spoke of, you would like to recommit, you can do that as well. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the decisions that have been made, lives that have been changed, eyes that have been opened, and we give you thanks for it. In Jesus' name, and all that agree, say it. Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Just a few announcements for you. We're going to let you go. Our Mother's Day extravaganza. Attention all mothers. You're invited to enter your name in for an opportunity to win a flat screen TV on Mother's Day. The mom that brings the most mothers as a guest to our Mother's Day service on May 13th will take home a brand new flat screen TV following our Mother's Day brunch. Also, the guest of the winning mom will receive a free gift. All guests must fully complete a greeting card on the day of service indicating who they are visiting as a guest of. Amen. Am I going to walk home with a free TV? <laughs> Praise God. Come see Pastor Creflo and Taffy Dollar live here in Charlotte. Amen. June 8th, 
Praise God. Experience is life-changing conference with Pastors Creflo and Taffy Dollar on Friday, June 8th, uh, 2018. Three powerful sessions, 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and 7 p.m. at the Concord Golf, uh, Golf Concord Charlotte Concord Golf Resort and Spa in Concord, North Carolina. It's a free event, but registration is required. The CD is limited. Uh, please see the location uh, on the screen, Embassy Suites in Charlotte. I uh, want to bring you, notify, notify you about the upcoming May discipleship classes. We have a membership class, Becoming a World Changer 101, on Saturday, May 5th. Our Discovering Spiritual Maturity course, uh, 201, on Sunday, May 6th. Water Baptism, Baby Dedication class, uh, Sunday, May 13th. Our Grace-Based Marriages, which is uh, newly added, on Saturday, May 19th. Uh, how to Study the Bible, uh, course number 205, on May 4th. And our Grace-Based Prayer Life. Uh, on Sunday, May 6th, all courses require pre-registration. Uh, you may register by email at charlottemembership uh, at worldchanges.org or complete your greeting cards and return it to the communications desk. Uh, visitors, please uh, don't forget to stop by the reception table with your completed visitor card for light refreshments and your gift for joining us here today. Once again, we thank you so much for joining us here today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us lift our hands to be dismissed. May the blessing of God, the grace of God, the Zoe life of God be forever in you, for you. May he escalate you to places that you never thought were possible. May his protection divinely cover your life, your family, your household. May you see the unexpected favor from him this week in everything you put your hands on. And Father, we receive this blessing and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Love you all. You're dismissed.